can give unless he has. In fact, giving is proof of having. We have made this point before. What seems to make it hard to credit is not this. No one can doubt that you must first possess what you would give. It is the second phase on which the word and true perception differ. Having had and given, then the word asserts that you have lost what you possessed. The truth maintains that giving will increase what you possess. How is this possible? For it is sure that if you give a finite thing away, your body's eyes will not perceive it yours. Yet we have learned that things but represent the thoughts that make them, and you do not lack for proof that when you give ideas away, you strengthen them in your own mind. Perhaps the form in which the thought seems to appear is changed in giving, yet it must return to him who gives, nor can the form it takes be less acceptable. It must be more. Ideas must first belong to you before you give them. If you are to save the word, you first accept salvation for yourself, but you will not believe that this is done until you see the miracles it brings to everyone you look upon. Herein is the idea of giving clarified and given meaning. Now you can perceive that by your giving is your store increased. Protect all things you value by the act of giving them away, and you are sure that you will never lose them. What you thought you did not have is terribly proven yours, yet value not its form, for this will change and grow unrecognizable in time, however much you try to keep it safe. No form endures, it is the thought behind the form of things that leaves unchangeable. Give gladly. You can only gain terribly. The thought remains and grows in strength as it is reinforced by giving. Thoughts extend as they are shared, for they cannot be lost. There is no giver and receiver in the sense the word conceives of them. There is a giver who retains, another who will give as well and both must gain in this exchange, for each will have the thought in form most helpful to him. What he seems to lose is always something he will value less than what will surely be returned to him. Never forget you give but to yourself. Who understand what giving means must laugh at the idea of sacrifice, nor can fail to recognize the many forms which sacrifice might take. He loss, he laughs, as well as pain and loss, and sickness and at grief, at poverty, starvation, and at death. He recognizes that sacrifice remains the one idea that stands behind them all, and in his gentle laughter are they healed. Illusion recognized must disappear, except not suffering, and you remove the thought of suffering. Your blessing lies on everyone who suffers, when you choose to see all suffering as what it is. The thought of sacrifice gives rise to all the forms that suffering appears to take. And sacrifice is an idea so mad that sanity dismisses it at once. Never believe that you can sacrifice. There is no place of sacrifice in what has any value. If the thought appears, its very presence proves 
that error has arisen and correction must be made. Your blessing will correct it. Given first to you, it knows it's yours to give as well. No form of, of sacrifice and suffering can long endure before the face of one who has forgiven and has blessed himself. The lilies that your brother offers you are laid upon your altar with the ones you offer him beside them. Who could fear to look upon such lovely holiness? The great illusion of the fear of God diminished to nothingness before the purity that you will look on there. Be not afraid to look. The blessedness, the bless, blessedness you will behold will take away all thought of form and leave instead the perfect give, give forever there, forever to increase, forever yours, forever given away. Now are we one in thought, for fear has gone, and here before the altar to one God, one Father, one Creator, and one thought, we stand together as one Son of God not separate from him who is our source, not distant, not distant from one brother who is part of our oneself, whose innocence has joined us all as one, we stand in blessedness and give as we receive. The name of God is on our lips and as we look within, we see the purity of heaven shine in our reflection of our Father's love. Now are we blessed, and now we bless the world. What we have looked upon, we would extend, for we would see it everywhere. We would behold it shining with the grace of God in everyone. We would not have it be with withheld from anything we look upon, and to ensure this holy sight is yours, we offer it to everything we see, for where we see it, it will be returned to us in form of lilies we can lay upon our altar, making it at home for innocence itself, who dwells in us and offers us his holiness as ours. Lesson 187 I bless the word because I bless myself.
Lesson 187 I bless the world because I bless myself.